we did resolve more than 50 years ago that we would approach the globalized world as a united bloc. Over the last two decades since its revival, the East African community has continued to deepen and widen the regional integration process guided by our treaty for the establishment of the East African community. Today, we take another critical step towards regional integration as we deliberate on the application by the Democratic Republic of the Congo to join the East African community. When we discussed the issue during our last meeting in December of 2021, we agreed that the application be prioritized and concluded within the provisions of the treaty. I want to applaud all government ministers and officials from all partner states, as well as the East African community officials who worked hard on this decision to expeditiously conclude the negotiations, thus paving the way for the admission of the Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African community. The Democratic Republic of Congo applied to join the East African community in February of 2018. Today, four years on, the Democratic Republic of Congo has met all the set criteria for admission, and we are all proud to have concluded the, re the, regional, the regional processes for admitting new members as provided for in our rules of procedure. Admitting the Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African community is historic for our community and for the African continent at large. It demonstrates the agility of the community to expand beyond its social cultural boundaries to new people and trade-centered partnerships and collaboration, which expand opportunities for our people in trade, investment, and jobs. Your Excellencies, today, the 29th of March, 2022, therefore marks another historic day for the East African community as we admit an additional member to our growing community. This date adds to other calendar milestones as we progressively deepen our integration to appreciate the journey we have walked together. And it is worth reminding ourselves of the other calendar milestones. And these include November 30th of 1999, when during the fourth summit, that was held in Arusha, we signed the treaty for the establishment of the East African community. We moved to July 7th of the year 2000, the date on which the treaty for the reestablishment of the East African community came into force, recreating a new regional organization, the East African community. To June the 18th, 2007, when the Republic of Rwanda and the Republic of Burundi acceded to the East African Treaty. To July 1st of 2009, when both Rwanda and Burundi joined the East African Customs Union and later held simultaneous official launch ceremonies in their respective capitals on the 6th of July, 2009. And then to September 5th, 2016, when the Republic of South Sudan became a full member of the East African community. I therefore today commend the negotiation teams led by the Council of Ministers for their dedication and the good work that they have done in processing this application from the Democratic Republic of Congo. I further commend the East African organs institutions for facilitating the processing and producing the result in record times. Today, as the chair of the East African community, I proudly 
and warmly welcome our brothers and sisters from the Democratic Republic of Congo to the East African community. And we look forward to joining hands in strengthening our community together. Working together, we have more to gain than when we are separate. Indeed, the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo and those of the East African community, as has already been stated by President Samia Hassan, have already moved ahead and integrated in various aspects of life, including language, social, as well as economically. To you, our dear brother, President Felix Tshisekedi, we welcome you to the summit of the East African community, heads of state and government. With the admission of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the, com the community will expand significantly in various aspects of mutual benefit for all. Indeed, the combined population and GDP of our community will grow by 50% and 25% respectively, implying a corresponding expansion of the market for goods and services. These numbers imply expanded market opportunities for producers located within the EAC under the customs union. The expanded community will attract more investments across all sectors and will attract more investment as also we create wealth and employment for our people. Equally important, the community will be in a better position to combine resources to develop the much needed infrastructure, especially the main transit corridors running from east to west. The said infrastructure is crucial in facilitating cross-border movements of goods, people, as well as physical capital as envisioned in the East African common market. With a larger market, the community will achieve better outcomes brought about by the economies of scale and pooling of productive human and financial resources. Indeed, the verification report of the Democratic Republic of Congo has confirmed that one, the Democratic Republic of Congo has bilateral and multilateral cooperation frameworks with the EAC partner states in various areas, including customs, infrastructure, productive, as well as social sectors. Secondly, it embraces a free market economy with liberalized trade, financial sector, and investment regime. Thirdly, its taxation system has similarities with those of the East African partner states. Fourthly, the Democratic Republic of Congo is a member of various regional as well as international bodies to which the East African community partner states belong. And lastly, it has infrastructure plans that target connection with East African community partner states. All of these points lay a strong foundation for our integration and cooperation. As the integration of the Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African community commences from today, we will build on the alignment and the verification report established and develop strategic interventions on areas that need to be addressed to ensure the full participation of the DRC into the East African community. An important first step is to ensure that we adhere to the agreed timelines for a session as specified in our session law, as well as the negotiation documents building on the progress already made in the implementation of the customs union, the common market, as well as the monetary union. Second, and in line with the treaty, which provides for a community in which the people are at the core of our integration, 
there is need to ensure that the people of the DRC, just like their brothers and sisters in the East African community, are kept updated on the East African integration process. Awareness, creation activities will need to be carried out on a continuous basis in order for the people to access the benefits of integration. In addition, the admission of, to the community comes with various obligations as specified in our treaty, from full participation in policy making to implementation of the agreed commitments, protocols, and laws, all partner states are required to meet their obligations. This ensures that the integration process moves ahead smoothly and the achievements of our objectives as set out by our treaty are realized as has been envisioned. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I want to once again reaffirm the commitment of the summit to overseeing the success of the East African community integration process. We are fully aware of the social and economic benefits realizable from a strong regional bloc in this globalized world. We have therefore resolved to give full support to the success of this process for the benefit of all our citizens in the East African region. With these few remarks, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for your kind attention and once more take this opportunity to welcome our brothers and sisters from the Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African community and His Excellency, President Felix Tshisekedi to the summit of the East African heads of state. Long live the East African community and I thank you all. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Thank you, Your Excellencies. And with those welcoming remarks, I would now like to call upon the Secretary General to make his brief statement. Secretary General, you have the floor. Mute. Secretary General, you're not audible. So, sorry, Your Excellency. I thank you, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya, and the Chairperson of the East African Community Aids of State Summit. Your Excellency, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda. Your Excellency, Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Your Excellency Kamia Sulu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, Your Excellency Prosper Bazobanza, Vice President of the Republic of Burundi, representing His Excellency President Evariste Daeshimie, Dr. Banaba Mario Benjamin, Minister of Presidential Affairs, Republic of South Sudan, representing His Excellency President Savakiu Mayadit. Your Excellency Felix Antoine Sheshikedi, President of the Democratic Republic of Congo in attendance, Chairperson and members of the ESC Council of Ministers, distinguished permanent principal and undersecretaries, heads of East African community organs and institutions, my brother, the Speaker Honorable Martin Goga, my brother, Honorable Kayobera, the Judge President, Honorable members of Parliament and of Iala here present, members of Diplomatic Corps, representatives of development partners, the chairperson of the East African Business Council, and the representative of the private sector, distinguished colleagues, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great humility that I wish to welcome your excellencies to this 19th extraordinary summit of the East African community heads of state. I thank you, your excellencies, for your profound commitment for the East African community regional integration agenda the region is forever grateful for your tireless efforts 
to foster structural transformation for sustainable development of our community. Your Excellencies today, and as you have said, Your Excellency, the Chair of the ESC Aids of the Summit, today marks a momentous occasion in the region's integration history as Your Excellencies consider admission of Democratic Republic of Congo into ESC. It brings hope to the people as we widen, deepen economic, political, social, and cultural integration that will improve the quality of lives and prosperity of the people of East Africa. This achievement is a hold to your excellencies for your vision and guidance that you have continued to provide for this region. Following your directive, your excellencies at the 18th Extraordinary Summit held on 22nd, December 2021, to expeditiously commence and conclude negotiations with the DRC for admission into the East African community. I'm pleased, Your Excellencies, to report that these negotiations concluded successfully on the 24th January 2022. Indeed, it was seamless with sectors from both sides easily compatible, making the negotiations easy and completed within the set timelines. Your Excellencies, admission of DRC into the East African community comes indeed with increased GDP and expanded market size making East African community a home to about 300 million people, which is mutually beneficial to the people of both East African community and indeed DRC, but also by providing employment and investment opportunities that come along with this new development. Your Excellencies, the East African community now spans from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean, making the region competitive and easy to access the larger African continent of free trade area. Excellencies, with the lower tariffs on goods and the removal of trading restrictions among partner states, we anticipate that goods and services will move freely within the region. With the larger market manufacturers in the region, whether large or small, will benefit from the economies of scale, making them increasingly efficient and competitive. We therefore invite the private sector to work closely with the private public sector to tap the benefits of this new development in our region. The DRC's entry requires integrating our trade infrastructure in the mode of connectivity, once to border post and trade systems, so that we can reduce the trade time taken and the costs that are involved. Enhancing trade facilitation will enable formal and informal cross-border trade along the region's transport corridors. Your Excellencies, upon accession to the treaty, establishing the East African community and depositing the instrument of acceptance with the Secretary General, DRC will join ESC cooperation in all the sectors, programs and activities that promote the four pillars of ESC integration. Collaboration in these areas will help us achieve the community's objectives as set out in Article 5 of the East African Treaty. Your Excellency, I thank you for the support that you've continued to render to the community's organs and institutions throughout admission process, a testimony to your dedication to the realization of a bigger, stronger, and united region. I wish to extend my sincere appreciation to the Council of Ministers for their continuous guidance and all the East African community partner states for their involvement throughout the admission process to set the stage for this historic occasion. Your Excellencies, as I conclude, with French as an official language of the community, the Secretariat has developed a proposal for simultaneous translation of Israeli and French in, into ESC statutory meetings to accommodate admission of DRC as it was directed by Your Excellencies on the 27th February 2021. This proposal is due for consideration by the next council. Once approved, it will allow us to seamlessly conduct business in the community. I wish to appreciate my colleagues, the ESC staff, for their dedication and service to the community. Their commitment throughout this process has made us achieve this milestone with ease. I invite them to continue with this spirit as I propose to work closely with the council to develop a mechanism that will improve the staff welfare. That has stagnated for Sometimes, Your Excellencies, I urge the citizens of East African community to warmly welcome the people of Democratic Republic of Congo into our wonderful community. 
Excellencies, heads of state, ladies and gentlemen, I humbly submit Asante Sana. Thank you, Jete Remisi. Thank you very much, Secretary General. Now, Your Excellencies, as you already know, we have already considered and adopted in our closed session the report by Chair of Council. And we did this during our closed session. And the summit has therefore taken a decision to admit the DRC as a full member of the East African community, the details of which will be reported fully in the communique by the Secretary General. So once again, Your Excellencies, as I have just said in my statement, I take this opportunity to warmly welcome His Excellency Felix Antoine Tshikedi Tshilombo of the Democratic Republic of Congo, who is also in attendance with us and will have the opportunity to make some remarks in due course into our community. Your Excellencies, at this juncture, I would like to open the floor for statements from heads of state and government. And I would like to invite His Excellency President Yueri Kaguta Museveni to make his remarks. Welcome, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, President Uhuru Kenyatta, His Excellency, President Poro Kagame of Rwanda, His Excellency, Her Excellency, Mama Samia Hassan, His Excellency, Antoine Chisekedi, President of the DRC, the Vice President of Burundi, the Minister from South Sudan, the Secretary General. The joining of the East African community by DRC is a, a big event of great significance. I have been involved in these efforts for almost the last, uh, almost 60 years. And this is really very pleasant that DRC has finally reconnected formally with East Africa. What we call DRC now is well, very well known to we, the people of the Great Lakes. A, a part of it was part of, of, of the Kingdom of Rwanda, Ruchuru area. Another part was part of the Kingdom of Bunyoro. Then the forest, we called it Bulega. In fact, we even have a king who was called Kavalega, meaning he had a connection with the, the, the Congo people. Therefore, all these areas, we are connected, we are connected. Before colonialism, as Mama Hassan said, Rwanda, Burundi, Karagwe, Tanzania, Buhaya, Kavirondo, what we used to call Kavirondo, that's Kenya, Usukuma. These were all connecting before colonialism. But when the colonials came, the Belgians took one side, then British another side, that's how we got disconnected. So it's good that we are reassembling. In the 1960s, towards the end, even Zambia had applied to join the East African community. The Secretariat can check the records. Even Somalia had applied. Therefore, Congo coming is very crucial. It's a very big event. It's good that it has happened when I'm still alive. I'm a very happy man. Now, this means 
as the Secretary General said, that this part of the world is connected coast to coast, Indian Ocean to the Atlantic. Population about 300 million people. The majority of which speak Swahili because many people in, East, in Congo speak Swahili apart from the other local languages, which we also share. So therefore, for people who are looking for prosperity, because really that is the main issue. This is a very big contribution. Prosperity means you produce and you sell. The more buyers you have, the better for that business. And therefore, on behalf of the people of Uganda, welcoming His Excellency Antoine Chisekedi and Congo, DRC, to join us, their brothers and sisters. We now need to work on the issue of peace in Eastern Congo, because that area has been disturbed for a long time by different groups. But if we work together, this, that problem can be solved. So I thank His Excellency Uhuru for chairing us for this, for this year. I, I thank everybody for supporting the reassembling of the African people. And I welcome and thank His Excellency Chisekedi for finally bringing the DRC into the East African community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, President Museveni. You've had a long history since uh, the very onset of the restart of the East African community, and we thank you for your contribution. I would now like to give the floor to His Excellency, President Paul Kagame of the Republic of Rwanda. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Excellency, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, Chairperson of the Summit, Excellencies, uh, Heads of State, Secretary General of the East African Community, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen. Let me once again thank the Chairperson of the East African Community, President Uhuru Kenyatta for convening this uh, extraordinary summit to consider the admission of uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African community, which is in line with our quest for wider and deeper integration of our region and the continent. I congratulate our brothers and the sisters from the Democratic Republic of Congo and welcome them into the East African community family. Rwanda commends the Council of Ministers and the East African Community Secretariat for speeding up this admission process. The accession of DRC and the institutions of the community to, I urge all organs and institutions of the community to accelerate the full integration of DRC into organization in keeping with the roadmap approved by the Council of Ministers. Rwanda stands ready to play its part in this process. Before I conclude, allow me to extend uh, our condolences to the government and the people of Uganda for the untimely passing of their Speaker of Parliament, uh, Right Honorable. Jacobo Olanya. Once again, 
Mr. President, the chair of our community, I congratulate you for convening us for this important occasion. And I congratulate the Democratic Republic of Congo and President Felix Antoine Chisekedi for this historic state. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And we also equally appreciate the incredible role that Rwanda continues to play in the integration process of our region. Thank you very much. I now give the floor to Her Excellency, President Samia Suluhu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Your Excellency Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya, and Chairperson of the EAC Heads of State, um, Excellencies Heads of State and Government, representatives of the Heads of State um, of Burundi and uh, South Sudan, uh, Secretary General for the EAC, Speaker of the EALA, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, it is an honor to be with you again, albeit virtually. Before I continue, Honorable Chair, allow me to join other speakers, the previous speakers, to express our condolences to our dear brother, His Excellency Yoweri Kabuta Museveni, and through him to the members of parliament, the bereaved family and the people of Uganda for the demise of the former speaker, Honorable Jacob Lokori Olanya. May the almighty God uh, grant his soul to all and rest the soul of Honorable Olanya in eternal peace. Amen. Excellencies, I also wish to commend His Excellency Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta for convening this important meeting with a very important agenda uh, to our region as, it, as its outcome will set another milestone, not only to the East African community, but also to the continent. With a long historical relationship with all EAC partner states, DRC is today officially joining the community as a full member. Tanzania say Karibu sana, DRC. And um, I, I have been informed that during verification process, our team had a time to engage with all key stakeholders and was also, were also part of DRC negotiation team. It is my optimism then that DRC will ratify the treaty of accession within a specified time to allow its citizen full integration into the community. And to my brother, Your Excellency Felix Sishekedi, I commend you for a decision to seek uh, admission into the EAC and to the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Your country's decision to join the EAC will afford you a great opportunity to extend space for peace and security, prosperity and solidarity with your, within your country, as well as to the region. Excellencies, it won't be fair to close my remarks without paying a vibrant tribute to the Council of Ministers and their peers on the DRC side and all experts involved since receiving the application by DRC to join the community. Likewise to the Secretariat for the excellent coordination of the whole exercise that allowed timely finalization of the process. We have already done justice to the people of East Africa 
and to the people of DRC. Finally, I'd wish to reiterate my personal commitment and that of the United Republic of Tanzania to the EAC integration. Excellencies, Ministers, Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your kind attention. In Tanzania, we say Kazi Yendele. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. And also, once again, we continue to note the ever increasing role that Tanzania has played and its commitment to our community. And we thank you for your statement, Kazi Endele. I now give the floor to His Excellency Prosper Bazumbaza, Vice President of Burundi. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Okay. Your Excellency Uhuru Mui Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya and current Chairman of the Summit of the East African Community Heads of State. Your Excellency Samia Suluhu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda. Your Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda. Your Excellency Sarvakir Mayardit, President of the Republic of South Sudan. Your Excellency Felix Antoine Chisekedi, President of the Republic of Congo, Distinguished Secretary General of the East African Community, Honorable Dr. Peter Matuki, Distinguished Chairperson of the East African Community of Ministers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me of all to thank the almighty God for it is thanks to his eternal love that he, the date finds us alive and able to serve our people with dignity and has made it possible for such important nineth the extraordinary summit of the East African community heads of states to take place today. On behalf of His Excellency, General Major Evariste Ndeishimi, President of the Republic of Burundi, who asked me to represent him at this ninth extraordinary summit of the East African community heads of states, I would like, first of all, to extend to your excellencies, the heads of states of the community, my most cordial greetings and those of the people of Burundi to all, to all of you and to the people of your respective countries. I would like to express my deep condolences to the public and the people of Uganda following the passing of the Speaker of the National Assembly. The Republic and the people of Burundi share in the pain and sorrow of the people of Uganda. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is a precious and memorable moment to analyze the various projects and programs of the East African community, and above all, to give orientations and a way forward on critical issues of vital importance to our community. I would like to commend the steps already taken so far and at the same time stress that we still have a lot to do to achieve the objectives of the community and make the peoples of the East African community one people, one destiny, as stated in the East African community motto, 
for it is said that unity makes make us strong and that solidarity consolidates unity. Some analysts and experts refer to the East African community as a model of integration. To this end, as a community, we are proud of such an enrichment and we must maintain this image and ensure that it is a model for the world to, uh, to follow. In the same vein, we are pleased to note that neighboring countries wish to join our community. There is a convincing testimony that once again, as a community, our efforts are rightly appreciated. We need to maintain the, this direction with the same pace to achieve the effective integration as advocated by the regional family. Today, on behalf of His Excellency General Major Everest Leishimie, the President of the Republic of Burundi, allow me to, congrat to congratulate President Felix Tshisekedi, the President of the Republic of Congo, for reaching this big step of DRC being admitted into the East African community. It is our joy and our honor to welcome DRC into the East African community. Excellencies, we are convinced that our integration agenda is first and foremost about finding answers to, to the challenges we face and the problems we are called upon to solve. Our real challenges are to fight poverty, armed conflicts that undermine this basis, this basis for economic growth and the development and to improve the standard of living of our peoples. To this end, the projects and programs of the East African community be they in the political, economic, and social sectors are vital and we must ensure that the imp implementation is critical and identical in all East African community partner countries. In this regard, we will stand firm and truly move forward as one. Excellencies, as our ultimate goal as sister countries is to achieve a political federation, it is vital that we constantly strengthen our efforts and remain strong as a block against terrorism, piracy, and transnational crime. It is our sincere hope that the tra transitional phase of the confederation that we are planning to, to start will, will not prevent, prevent us from eventually concluding a political federation as stipulated in the treaty establishing the EAC. The Republic of Burundi is committed and will spare no effort to constructively contribute to peace stability and development of EAC citizens. Finally, we are convinced that being together will effectively facilitate the community's progress to the next stages of integration. Together, we will achieve our dreams. Together, we can. Long live the East African community Long live the East African partner countries. Long live international cooperation. God bless you all. Thank you for your kind attention.
Thank you, Your Excellency Vice President, for that statement made on behalf of His Excellency President Everest Daishimie, our warmest and kindest regards to him. I now give the floor to Dr. Barnaba Marial Benjamin, Minister of Presidential Affairs of the Republic of Congo. Minister, you have the floor. South Sudan. South Sudan, forgive me. <laughs> forgive me. Yeah. Uh, it's great. Your Excellency Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, Chairperson of the Summit of the East African Heads of State and President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency Yuweri Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda, Your Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Your Excellency Samuel Soluhu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, Your Excellency Felix Anton Chisakedi, President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Your Excellency Vice President Prosper Ozambanza, representing His Excellency President of Burundi, Evariste Indaishima, uh, President of the Republic of Burundi. Uh, first of all, Your Excellency, I would like to extend once again His Excellency President Salva Kiir Mayadid, sending all of you his warmest greetings and wishing you all good health in your various responsibilities in our region. First of all, Mr. Chairman, allow me to convey once again the regrets of His Excellency President Salva Kiir Mayadid for not being able to be with his brothers and sister in this great day, the morning, the morning of the 19th Extraordinary Summit of the East African Heads of State. This is due to pressing matters surrounding the implementation of the revitalized agreement on the resolution of the conflict in the Republic of South Sudan. We would like to share with you that the peace process is moving forward in order to achieve stability in the Republic of South Sudan. As your excellencies are aware, of course the revitalized transitional government of national unity is in the process of establishing a unified forces. Up to now, we have managed to train about 50,000, 53,000 troops are ready for graduation. That is a great milestone in the security arrangement of the implementation of the peace agreement. I'm equally delighted, Mr. Chairman, to convey the message and giving me the honor to convey the message of my president, His Excellency President Salva Kiir Mayadi. Your Excellencies, please allow me once more to convey His Excellency President Salva Kiir Mayadi's message of congratulations to His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta for convening this very important 19th Extraordinary Summit of the East African Community Heads of State. Despite the continued challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, you have managed, Mr. President, uh, to bring the East African community and family together in order to discuss today's very important agenda. That is the membership of the Democratic Republic of Congo and equally and including a discuss to the 48th extraordinary meeting of the East African Community Council of Ministers for the comprehensive report on the admission of the DRC into the East African community. This is a remarkable effort and a very important step to realization of a cohesive East African community. A light at the end of the tunnel for the reintegration of our region, both economically, politically, and culturally. As your excellencies are aware, our mission as a community is to widen and deepen economic, political, social, cultural integration 
in order to improve the quality of life of our people of East Africa. Through increased competitiveness, value added production, trade and investment. Your Excellencies, what better way to realize our mission than to incorporate a market of almost 100 million people from the Democratic Republic of Congo to our vibrant community, making a number of nearly 300 million people. This will propel our organization towards political, diplomatic, and economic progress. Finally, Your Excellencies, I would like to convey His Excellency President Salva Kiir Mayadi Congratulations to his brother, His Excellency President Felix Antoine Shisekedi for having the vision to see the benefits of guiding Democratic Republic of Congo towards the East African community. As our great father, Dr. I mean, President Iwari Museveni told us a history of how he struggled to see that DRC comes into this family. And for South Sudan, South Sudan has very close relation and a long border with the DRC. We share ethnic groups, the Azande people that extend from South Sudan up to the Northern part of Congo. This is a great togetherness at this day. Your Excellencies, I have been delegated by my president to welcome the report of the East African community of ministers on the admission of the Democratic Republic of Congo to our community. As a nation, the Republic of South Sudan values the importance of strengthening our community by deepening our ties within the East African region. As we consider this very important agenda, I would like to reiterate the Republic of South Sudan commitment to East African community. As our all are aware, the destructive conflict in our young nation has greatly impacted our effective participation within the East African community. Sadly enough, the conflict, which was compounded by the effects of COVID-19 pandemic, led to the Republic of South Sudan falling behind on its contribution to the East African community, an issue that we will soon rectify. Your Excellencies, the East African community stood firmly with the Republic of South Sudan and continues to work shoulder to shoulder with us as we navigate out of the challenges resulting from our conflict. I am pleased to inform you all that we are implementing our peace agreement and are preparing the ground for elections so as to begin a fresh chapter in South Sudan developmental story, indeed in the year 2023. Your Excellencies, President Salva Kiir Mayadi has directed me to assure Your Excellencies of the government's commitment to clearing all your outstanding to the strengthening of our community. In this vein, the government, the Republic of South Sudan, welcomes the report of the 48th extraordinary meeting of the community and does not object, in fact, greatly welcomes the Democratic Republic of Congo to our vibrant community. Finally, please allow me to applaud the Secretary General of the East African Community, Honorable Dr. Machuku Matuki, for allowing the sons and daughters of the Republic of South Sudan to participate in the Secretariat of the East African Community. By employing our sons and daughters, you will allow the Republic of South Sudan to effectively participate in the direction of the community. Mr. Chairman, Asante Sana. Thank you, sir. I thank you for your support as a region as you move forward in the implementation of the revitalized agreement. And we look forward to working with you to see peace, security, and stability restored to South Sudan to ensure that the people of South Sudan and indeed the people of East Africa as a whole can benefit from the dividend of peace. And I have the honor, pride and joy to welcome His Excellency President Felix Antoine Tshikedi Tshilombo to make his statement. Your Excellency, you have the floor.
Hey. President Felix Tshisekedi, maybe we had uh, a slight uh, problem with uh, the, the, the system, but uh, as I have just said, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you, Your Excellency, our newest member. And to say it is with great pride and joy. Kenya. Excellences, Madame et Messieurs les chefs d'État de la Communauté d'Afrique de l'Est, Excellences, Messieurs les représentants des chefs d'État et des gouvernements de et de gouvernements de l'Afrique de l'Est, Monsieur le Président du Conseil des ministres de la Communauté d'Afrique de l'Est, Honorable Monsieur le Président de l'Assemblée législative de l'Afrique de l'Est. Monsieur le juge président de la Cour de justice de l'Afrique de l'Est, Monsieur le secrétaire général de la Communauté d'Afrique de l'Est, distingués invités, Mesdames et Messieurs, permettez-moi de vous remercier pour l'accueil si chaleureux, bien que virtuel, que vous avez réservé à la République démocratique du Congo en ce jour de son adhésion à la communauté de l'Afrique de l'Est. Avant de continuer, je voudrais également joindre au nom du peuple congolais mes sincères condoléances au peuple frère de la République d'Ouganda et particulièrement au président Yoeri Kaguta Museveni pour le décès du président de l'Assemblée nationale de son pays. L'admission de la République démocratique du Congo à la communauté de l'Afrique de l'Est que nous célébrons aujourd'hui est sans doute l'aboutissement heureux de vos efforts personnels et l'expression d'une volonté commune des dirigeants de notre sous-région de bâtir une communauté d'hommes et de femmes solidaires et déterminés à partager un même destin. Le peuple congolais s'en réjouit et prend part, par ma voix, l'engagement solennel devrait de toutes ses forces pour le développement de l'Afrique de l'Est, notamment par l'optimisation de l'exploitation de nombreux atouts économiques de nos pays respectifs et des opportunités de coopération insuffisamment exploitées qu'ils offrent pour le bien-être de nos populations. Le peuple congolais vous en saurait à jamais gré. Excellences, Madame et Messieurs les chefs d'État, Mesdames et Messieurs, aujourd'hui donc, mon ambition de faire entrer mon pays dans la communauté de l'Afrique de l'Est, l'un des blocs commerciaux et économiques les mieux intégrés du continent, vient de franchir une étape décisive. En effet, j'ai toujours reconnu que la communauté d'Afrique de l'Est est la meilleure en matière de libre circulation des personnes et des biens, d'intégration des infrastructures, d'intégration économique et commerciale comparativement aux autres blocs économiques sous-régionaux en Afrique. Il vous souviendra d'ailleurs que dès mon discours d'investiture le 24 janvier 2019, j'avais fixé comme l'un des objectifs de ma mandature l'intégration de la République démocratique du Congo dans votre communauté de l'Afrique de l'Est, que dis-je, notre communauté. En effet, la majorité des pays membres de cette communauté nous sont frontaliers. Nous partageons avec eux les populations, les langues, les coutumes et le cadre naturel de vie au nord, au sud et à l'est de notre pays et effectuons des échanges économiques importants depuis plusieurs décennies. En fait, nous, Congolais, avons toujours fait partie de l'Afrique de l'Est depuis des siècles. 
Il ne restait qu'à formaliser cette appartenance dans une structure organisée et à intégrer dans une dynamique sous-régionale collective de développement. Chose faite en ce mardi 29 mars 2022. Excellences, Madame et Messieurs, Madame et Messieurs les chefs d'État, Mesdames et Messieurs, cette journée marque un moment historique pour mon pays et pour les peuples d'Afrique parce qu'elle ouvre la voie, j'en ai la ferme certitude, vers l'harmonisation des politiques et des systèmes juridiques de la République démocratique du Congo avec ceux de la communauté de l'Afrique de l'Est, ce qui présente plusieurs avantages réciproques, notamment l'intégration de l'Est, du Nord et du Sud de mon pays à l'espace commun de télécommunications permettra la réduction des coûts avec les pays voisins, des multiples facilités administratives, la réduction des charges et l'accroissement des activités commerciales et économiques des citoyens, ainsi que la facilitation de leur mobilité entre nos pays, la réduction des tarifs douaniers pour des marchandises réceptionnées dans les ports de Mombasa au Kenya et de Dar es Salaam en Tanzanie, l'application du, du pacte de sécurité collective de la communauté et la mutualisation renforcée des forces contre l'activisme des groupes armés locaux et étrangers, ainsi que le terrorisme à l'Est. L'admission du français comme langue officielle de la communauté, aux côtés de l'anglais et du swahili, l'élargissement du marché par l'addition d'une population congolaise estimée à 90 millions d'habitants, donc un marché de 90 millions de consommateurs, l'augmentation de potentialités économiques et d'opportunités d'investissement en Afrique de l'Est par l'apport des richesses naturelles de la République démocratique du Congo, la réduction des tensions entre nos pays et la concertation régulière sur des questions d'intérêt commun et africaine. Excellences, Madame et Messieurs les chefs d'État, Mesdames et Messieurs, je ne saurais terminer mon propos sans vous annoncer le désir de la République démocratique du Congo de proposer la création d'un nouvel organe ou ce que la communauté appelle une nouvelle institution qui se penchera spécifiquement sur l'environnement, les ressources naturelles, les mines et l'énergie, et dont le siège pourrait être à Kinshasa. Sur ce, je déclare solennellement, au nom du peuple congolais, que la République démocratique du Congo accueille favorablement la décision de la communauté de l'Afrique de l'Est de l'admettre en son sein, et se considère désormais comme membre à part entière de cette organisation sous-régionale africaine. Que vive l'amitié entre les peuples de la communauté d'Afrique de l'Est. Que Dieu bénisse notre communauté. Je vous remercie. I thank you very much, Your, Your Excellency, for that statement. And I indeed look forward to the signing of the Treaty of Accession of the Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African community before the stated date of the 14th of April, 2022. And indeed, we all look forward to working together with you for the peace, security, and stability of all the people of the East African region. Once again, Your Excellency, welcome, and thank you for that statement. Your Excellencies, as we move to close, and as I thank you individually for your statements, and indeed thank once again our ministers and EAC officials for the work and effort that they have put in to making this day a reality. Before I hand back 
to the Secretary General of the East African Community to take us through the communique. I would also like on behalf of the people of Kenya to also extend to our brother, His Excellency President Yuweri Kaguta Museveni and the people of Uganda, our deepest condolences on the loss of Speaker of the National Assembly. We stand together with the people of Uganda in this difficult moment. With that, I would also like to request that as the Secretary General prepares to uh, take us through the communique, that he may also add a line in the communique expressing the summit's condolence to the people of Uganda over this untimely loss. I hope I have the agreement of all your excellencies for that one addition to the communique. I thank you. Secretary General, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. I now read the communique. 19th Extraordinary Summit of the East African Community Heads of State communique. The East African Community Heads of State, their Excellencies, President Uhuru Kenyatta of the Republic of Kenya, President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni of the Republic of Uganda, President Paul Kagame of the Republic of Rwanda, President Samia Sulu Hassan of the United Republic of Tanzania, Vice President Prosper Bazobanza, representing President Evariste Dayeshimie of the Republic of Burundi, and Dr. Banaba Mario Benjamin, Minister of Presidential Affairs, representing the President Salva Kinmayadit of the Republic of South Sudan, held the 19th Extraordinary Summit of the East African Community Heads of State via video conference on 29th March 2022. In attendance was the President of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The heads of state met in a warm and cordial atmosphere. The summit recalled that its 18th extraordinary meeting held on 22nd December 2021, it had directed the council to expeditiously commence and conclude negotiations with the Democratic Republic of Congo for admission to the East African community and report to the next summit. Three, the summit condoled with the President Yori Kaguta Museveni and the people of the Republic of Uganda upon the demise of the late Right Honorable Jacob Olanya, speak, formerly Speaker of the Parliament of Uganda. The summit noted the successful conclusion of the negotiations between the Democratic Republic of Congo and the East African community for the admission of the Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African community and commended both parties for this achievement. The summit received and considered the report of the 46th extraordinary meeting with the Council of Ministers and the recommendation on the admission of Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African community. The summit decided to admit the Democratic Republic of Congo as a full member of the East African community. The summit designated His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, the chairperson of the summit, to sign the treaty of accession of the, to, of the Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African community by 14th April 2022. Thereafter, the Democratic Republic of Congo shall be required to deposit the instruments of ratification to the Secretary General before 29 September 2022. The summit directed the Council to develop a roadmap for the integration of the Democratic Republic of Congo into the EAC and report progress to the next summit. 
the summit called for deeper economic, political, social, cultural integration, <coughs> a view to improving the quality of lives of the people of East African community through increased competitiveness, value added production, trade and investment for sustainable economic recovery. Their Excellency is President Yerika Guta Museveni of Republic of Uganda, President Paul Kagame of the Republic of Rwanda, President Samia Sulu Hassan of the United Republic of United Republic of Tanzania, Vice President Prosper Bazubanza, representing President Evariste Daishimiye of the Republic of Burundi, and Dr. Banaba Maria Benjamin, Minister of Presidential Affairs, representing President Sava Kiu Madit of the Republic of Sudan, <coughs> thanked the chairperson of the, of the summit. President Uhuru Kenyatta of the Republic of Kenya for successfully convening the 19th Extraordinary Summit, done virtually this 29th day of March 2022. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary General. Your Excellencies, may we have Proposals for us to adopt uh, the communique just by a show of hands that we adopt the communique as read by the Secretary General. I thank you. The communique will, is adopted and will be signed by the Secretary General. So, Your Excellencies, we have now come to the end of this 19th Extraordinary Summit. And I want to take this opportunity to thank all your excellencies for finding time from your very busy schedules to attend this historic 19th Summit that has seen our community grow to approximately 300 million people with great opportunity for all the peoples of our region. I thank each and every one of you. I thank our ministers and the council for the hard work that they have put into it. I thank our officials at the Secretariat of the community in Arusha. And I can see they are busy putting up now the flag of the Democratic Republic of uh, Congo. As a full member now, congratulations, well done. Thank you very much. And I now take this opportunity to ask us all to rise for the anthem of the East African community as we bring our meeting to a close. Africa Mashariki Yeah, yeah.